The Earth is a fantastic planet, unique, at least to the solar system. If we get higher, we can get an astonishing view. From the tower of a church, we can see streets crossing and the distribution of buildings. From the top of a mountain, we can observe villages and fields. But what if we get even higher? What can we find out about our country or our planet if we observe it from higher up in the sky? Satellites observe the Earth all the time. However, only a few people can tell us how the Earth looks when observed from space with the naked eye. They're astronauts. Today, one of them is with us, the Italian astronaut Roberto Vittori, belonging to the team of ESA astronauts. Welcome, thanks for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Ten years ago, you have been for the first time on board the International Space Station. Could you tell us what you remember from that first trip? Any space flight is very unique. Any space flight is a, a sequence of a very exclusive moment. Um, obviously, if you think back, if I would think back to 10 years ago, that was the 25th of April 2002. I for sure, the first image, the first picture that I have in my memories and recollections is uh, the moment where after I walked out of the bus before uh, getting on the elevator that uh, took me together with uh, my two friends and colleagues up to the Soyuz, this uh, 55 meter tall rocket ready for the space flight. Which are the tasks of an astronaut during those missions? Do they include something about Earth observation? A space flight is a very complex mixture of uh, many a variety of different activities. Daily life on board of the station is one, and then you do maintenance, you do experiments. It's a, it's a extremely uh, long, a complex. Each day is a complex day. Nevertheless, on occasions you do find the time to um, look out of the window and uh, you really uh, enjoy the beauty of the view of Earth as seen from the International Space Station. It's a, a very exclusive opportunity. The International Space Station orbits the Earth at a height of about 400 kilometers above us. That is 50 times higher than Mount Everest. In a clear night sky, you can see it with the naked eye. It appears like a star quickly moving in the sky. It takes only 90 minutes to complete a full orbit around the Earth. On board, can you remark the speed of the space station? Only 90 minutes for a complete orbit. The International Space Station is flying very, very fast, similarly to the Soyuz and the shuttle. It's uh, 28,000 kilometers per hour. What is 28,000 kilometers per hour? Eight kilometers each second. Uh, see if you can get the feeling how fast we fly. Let's say that we want to take a picture of Cologne. Why Cologne? Because Cologne is uh, the hometown for the European astronaut. Okay? So we know that we are about to overfly Cologne, so we prepare ourselves with the camera. And uh, you need to be, uh, by the time you overfly London, you need to already to have your camera in your hands and know which window to take. And then you look uh, to the horizon and you start seeing Germany that is coming over. You barely have the time to prepare your camera and uh, click, you take your picture. The International Space Station is very far away. Indeed, somebody can observe the Earth from even higher up in space, two times higher than the space station, 800 kilometers above us. We are talking about the high-tech instruments on board satellites, similar to artificial eyes. It takes them about 100 minutes to complete an orbit around the Earth, but almost a month to collect data related to all the Earth's surface. They monitor the state of our planet. Today, Five of these satellites are currently in orbit, operated by the European Space Agency. If we take into account also satellites sent by other agencies, there are many more of such satellites. They collect extraordinary images and send them to us. 
Each satellite was conceived in order to give us some specific information. The first one of the series, placed in orbit by ESA, was ERS-1, launched in 1991. Using a radar instrument, it gave important information about the oceans and winds over the sea surface, volcanoes, earthquakes, ice caps, poles, and land. Images acquired by satellites may appear very different from our everyday experience, in such a way that it might be difficult to understand what they represent, even when they show a well-known location. This is due to the fact that satellite eyes are different from ours, and they consist of sophisticated instruments. In addition, images are usually further processed by scientists. Let's play a game. Do you recognize some of these locations? Did you ever see them or take pictures of them while you were on board? Those are very nice. Those are beautiful pictures. No, I do not recognize what those are. I can only say that uh, what I recognize is the beauty of uh, those scenarios, is the beauty of the scene of Earth as you have a possibility to enjoy it from space. It's, it's very, very beautiful and uh, if you want to recognize, uh, you really need to concentrate and uh, understand exactly what in each scenario nature is offering to you. It's uh, really a, a unique experience. GOCE is another satellite of the European Space Agency. It was launched in 2009 to measure the gravity field in every single point of the Earth. One of the first results that it provided is the very precise confirmation that the gravity field of the Earth has the shape of a potato. Indeed, ERS-1 in the 90s gave us a good model already, but only GOCE confirmed it in a detailed way. Obviously, from the International Space Station, it is impossible to make such a precise measurement. Anyway, experiments of microgravity are performed. Can you please describe them? What is microgravity? Well, it's uh, microgravity. If we would go back to space, to the International Space Station, we would float. We open a tub and the water doesn't fall. It's forms a bubble in front of us and they start floating around. Would you guess, would you put yourself in this very special world floating around with everything is floating, including yourself, your body, and you are free to rotate all over the place? It would be a very enjoyable place. Yes, it is. It is, but uh, behind this very nice idea of uh, floating, there is a very important concept that is research. In fact, microgravity is an opportunity for research. Just two years ago, Cryosat was launched, a satellite dedicated to control the state of the glaciers, unfortunately threatened by the risk of melting due to global warming. Cryosat helps scientists to understand how and at which speed glaciers are breaking and melting. How is to observe glaciers from the International Space Station? Do they seem big or small? And did you ever remark any difference in their shape from a mission to another? I flew three times. The first time in 2002, the second in 2005, the third in 2011. Uh, therefore, I cover about 10 years from the first to the last. And I did try to look for changes, especially for glaciers. And uh, no, I have not uh, been able to see any difference uh, among my three opportunities. Nevertheless, <clears throat> it is very difficult because you look from above down. So changes are very difficult to appreciate with a naked eye. Uh, what I can uh, tell you for sure is the beauty of the scene of Earth from space, but also how fragile it appears. The atmosphere appears as a very little tiny strip that is protecting our planet. Maybe from the International Space Station, one day it might be possible to spot a less consistent mass of ice at the poles. If this should eventually happen, we will be in serious danger.
Even today, measurements taken from ERS and NVSAT satellites show that oceans are rising 3 mm per year, and this might be attributed to the effect of climate change. There are several islands like the Maldives that our sons or grandsons may be able to visit one day, only if equipped with oxygen tanks. I want to leave a message to the kids uh, that uh, wants to underline some type of a, uh, it may appear a contradiction, but it is not. We are describing the beauty of, of Earth and we are underlining the need to protect Earth. At the same time, we are also uh, trying to work with technology, how they to work together. In fact, Earth observation is exactly the demonstration of, uh, of the synergy of the two. In uh, looking down from space to Earth, in having this unique opportunity to see Earth from outside, you learn, you understand, and therefore you protect.